In this lesson, I want to talk about a couple of useful utilities. Now, one of these utilities we've been using a little bit so far, and it's grep. And grep actually stands for global replace. And I can use grep to search for string patterns in files or in basically anything I feed to grep. So let's just grep for the word file in everything in my current directory. That's what the asterisk here means. It's a wild card that says, use everything that you can find. I've got a file here called errors.txt, which apparently has a number of matches for that word file. You can see all of those there. And if I scroll down, I've got examples.desktop here. We've got URL equals file. And then I've got, looks like three files here that match the word file. Now, you'll also see that I've got some listings here that say is a directory. When I just search for asterisk, it's looking for files. It's not actually looking for anything in a directory. For that, I would need a recursive search, and I could do grep minus R. And again, I could do file and then asterisk. And in this case, I've got a directory underneath that apparently has a lot of matches for the word file. And so we've got a lot of different things. Now I don't have the error indicating that it was a directory. So I can use grep for a lot of different stuff. I can do, for example, we looked at this earlier. If I did AUX and then I could grep for bash. So I'm getting a process list and I'm just looking for different things based on the string that I have provided. And I'm using the pipe, and the pipe, as I've mentioned previously, says take the output of the first command and send it to the input of the second one. So this is really helpful, and it's one place that you can use grep an awful lot, is this piping the output of one command into grep to look for specific things. So, for example, earlier we were talking about Let's say we were talking about looking for packages, and I wanted to do something like look for Apache, which is the web server. Well, if I do that, I'm going to get a lot of listings here. Well, I want to narrow that down, so I'm going to grep for, let's say, PHP, which is a programming language. Well, now I've got a much more manageable list. So grep extracted only the entries from apt-cache search and showed me something more specific. So that's what I can use grep for. Now, another useful utility, let me just clear the screen here. Another useful utility is sed. And sed is stream editor. Well, that's what it stands for. That's actually what it does. So if I were to do, this is true, for example, I'm just using echo and it says this is true. Now, if I were to use sed on that, and again, I'm going to use the pipe because I'm going to send the output of echo into the input of sed. Now I'm going to say sed, and I'm going to search for, and this forward slash here is actually my indicator that I'm starting a string. So I want to say true here. And now I do another slash, and I want to replace true with false. So I'm doing a stream edit, and I'm searching for true, and I'm replacing it with false. You can see that even though I said echo this is true, I used said for this is false. Now, what I can also do here is let's do a grep on file in my current directory. And then I'm going to send that into said. And I'm going to replace file with non file, for example, just to have something to replace it with. Now you can see everywhere that previously I had file, I replaced it with non-file. Except here, you can see I replaced the first file with non-file. In order to replace all of the instances across a line, I would have to do G at the end that just says globally. Now you can see I've replaced here my file with my non-file, and at the end of the line here where it previously said file, it says non-file. Now, I could certainly take the output of one file, so let's say cat my file, and I'm going to send that into sed, where I'm going to change file to 
So let's say foo. And now I'm going to redirect the output, which would normally just come back to the screen. I'm going to redirect the output into my foo. Now, if I cat my foo, I have changed the file into foo here, which you can see. So you can see a stream editor is pretty handy for making a lot of changes to various output, including a lot of quick and easy changes to files where otherwise you'd be going into an editor and trying to use the editor to make a lot of those changes. You could just use the stream editor, do it right here on the command line and have it all be done for you.